Before they leave for the spirit world, the Tsuki tells her future husband that the place where they are going to be visiting is a place of endless water and small islands for humans and for other visitors to stand upon and for them to be able to traverse the land of endless water. When they arrive in the spirit world, they are greeted by an older man who is regal and imposing and the Tsuki introduces him as her father. The human form of the Tsuki's father is an older and very imposing gentleman. He smiles at the hunter, but the hunter still feels an intimidating air. And despite this, the hunter gathers up his courage and asks him for his daughter's hand in marriage. The father readily agrees, and the two of them have a wedding shortly after. The wedding is where they are visited by other people from the Tsuki's family, and the husband gets to know more about the powers of the Tsuki. Though his wife is quite young, she's still a powerful Tsuki, and he is impressed to learn that as she gets older, she'll gain more mastery over her water powers. He decides to stay with her in the water world, and the two of them soon have a son. But after this, he starts to go longer and longer without seeing his family back home. And so he tells his wife that he misses them, and she boldly tells him that he must go back to them, and he readily agrees, but only after she asks if she can go with him, to which he is very pleased, and so the two of them go back to the human world, leaving their son in the care of his grandfather. Upon being reunited with his mother and father, he tells them of a wonderful journey that he went on, although he is purposefully vague when he is asked about why he was gone so long, deciding not to tell them about his new wife and about the fact that he went on a journey to the spirit world. He soon settles into a new life and a new routine, wherein he spends the days hunting with his wife, who accompanies him in the form of a human, and whereupon he falls asleep each night wrapped up in a blanket that is made up of her body where she is in her more watery and more amorphous form. During this time, he begins to get many admirers from people who don't know that he's married yet. Many women are curious about the secret to his success because he's an even more astounding hunter than he was in the months prior to his absence. Eventually, people get curious, so one of them sneaks into his hut in the middle of the night when he is fast asleep, and she sees that he is wrapped up in a funny-looking blanket that almost looks like it's made up of water. During this period, his wife gets pregnant with another child, and so she stays home all day. So, it is during this time that he establishes a rule for his friends and for his family. He warns them not to visit his hut during the day, otherwise they would see something that they wouldn't know how to explain, and they could very well get in trouble. Unbeknownst to him, one day as he's out hunting, they decide to disobey this rule, and when they go into his hut, they are surprised to see a snake. The most fortunate coincidence in this myth is that at this point, the wife has already given birth, and the hunter now has a beautiful daughter who is rapidly aging, accompanying him during these hunts. The two of them are still capable of gathering more than enough for their entire village, but sadly, the villagers in their ignorance decide to do something about the snake, worried that it would attack the hunter when he got back home. They grab a hot poker and they poke the snake with it and are very surprised when the snake dissolves into the ground below. Though the wound she suffered is far from mortal, the Tsuki still retreats into the spirit world so that way she wouldn't hurt anyone. She cries to her father and her father demands to know what's happened. Upon hearing the truth, the father grows enraged and he conjures up a mighty storm. He uses all of his powers to send the storm to earth, meanwhile contacting snakes that the family is friendly with on earth and telling them as to what to do to punish the people who dared hurt his daughter. Back on earth, the hunter returns home with his daughter in tow, and the two of them ask as to what happened, because they see the villagers who are shocked and concerned. They are surprised when they hear that a snake was found in his house, and that the villagers decided to do something about it. The hunter smiles grimly and warns them that some good fortune is about to come their way. They don't quite realize that he is being sarcastic, but his daughter does, and the two of them return home, pack up, and quickly flee from the village. 
that's when the rain comes. In the days before leaving the spirit world, the Dasuki's father and the hunter had a conversation where he explained the heights of his powers. If he were ever enraged enough, he could summon a mighty storm and use it to ravage the earth, as the spirits possess incredible power and are responsible for natural phenomenon. The hunter and his daughter quickly fled into the Amazon, searching for the highest possible land they could find. They looked and looked, and they were surprised to see that the waters were quickly catching up to them, but they were able to discover a very tall tree, and they climbed up it quite rapidly, worried for their safety and for their future. The two were even briefly pursued by snakes, but the snakes stopped upon getting closer to the daughter and realizing that she had a familiar scent. They couldn't quite place it, but they decided to move on and to search for other people to hunt, because the hunter and his daughter were quite fast, even in the rainforest. The hunter and his daughter stayed atop the tree for a long time as they waited for the floodwaters to recede and for the last of the snakes to go away. When they did, the two of them slowly climbed down and realized that everything they knew, all the people they loved, were gone. It was in that moment when the Tasuki returned. The Tasuki reappeared to her husband, and she wrapped her arms around him, and the two of them were very happy to be reunited and safe at last, but they also realized that they had a lot of work to do. The village that was wiped out was one of the only villages, and they didn't know how far the flood went. It was possible that the entire world was crushed in this flood. And so, the three of them had a lot of work to do if they ever wanted to help humanity recover.